will uh, call the meeting to order at uh, 6 09. So, hey, still within 10 minutes. Uh, this is the uh, meeting of the Westport Long Term Building Committee. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, we will stand for the pledge. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We have two meetings uh, to approve minutes for on August 30th, as well as uh, a walkthrough for the old high school on September the 6th. And I will uh, take these, I believe, separately here. Uh, so uh, we we'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from August 30th. So moved. Second. And it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Uh, minutes are approved. And now for the September 6th uh, Old High School walkthrough, I will, if there are no edits, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve those minutes as well. So moved. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. It has been approved. The next item, uh, as I'm sure Mr. Hartnett will be happy to see, uh, is to uh, the reorganization of the committee, uh, basically to appoint a committee clerk. And I was going to ask once again if anybody else was interested in seeing. Uh, I don't. I, Somehow I didn't think I'd see a lot of hands raised, yeah. but I figured I'd ask to give your hand a rest if, uh, if at all possible. So, so oh. it's broken. Okay, so I guess we'll we'll. Well, I guess the uh, if, if no one is willing to be nominated at this point, we'll uh, we'll continue without a clerk, and uh, I'm probably going to keep pressing on that for the next uh, next meetings here. So. Um, if you will notice on the original agenda, um, there were discussion items that were uh, put before action items um, working off of a slightly amended agenda. I did pass around uh, the amendment, uh, but basically what we are uh, uh, going to, what, I, what I'm proposing we move up is just the action items, uh, two of them, the statement of committee goals and an approval of uh, a timeline for committee action. So the first, uh, first item would be a statement to approve a statement of committee goals and I distributed this uh, this statement to everyone here at the meeting uh, and this is a proposal for a uh, a goal statement I will go ahead and read it for <coughs> for the recording here uh, the goals of the Westport long-term building committee uh, it shall be the goal of the 2023 Westport long-term building committee to present a well-researched and thorough recommendation to the town of Westport concerning the optimal long-term use of, the, of its existing municipal buildings. The Long-Term Building Committee shall conduct a comprehensive evaluation of all current municipal buildings to assess their condition, functionality, and adaptability. It will analyze and identify the best current and future uses for each, ensuring that they serve the needs of the community effectively and sustainably. Examine all potential costs related to maintenance, renovation or repurposing to inform fiscally responsible decision making and finally to deliver a comprehensive recommendation to the town of Westport by the end of the first quarter of 2024 complete with detailed estimates of all associated costs the reason I am putting uh, posing this well actually if, if uh, for the just to keep everything in order here um, I will go ahead and move that this be approved uh, so that we might uh, have a discussion about it and would entertain uh, if anyone would we'll we'll second it. We'll second that. Thank you very much, second, uh, Ms. Brown. So uh, now we'll just move into discussion. Um, the reason I am putting this out there is because I think that uh, there has been some really productive discussion that has taken place in the past few meetings, but it has also, uh, what, what it has come come to my attention is that many of these discussions have been had in previous uh, committees so 
my my thinking in terms of, of these goals is to ultimately come to a some sort of actionable uh, recommendation to give to the town that has again a comprehensive evaluation of the potential uses uh, of of the old high school, but also brings that together with all of uh, with an evaluation of all of the municipal buildings because you know when it comes to the town spending on the buildings the the old high school doesn't exist in a vacuum the amount of money that would be spent on on other uh, buildings whether it's this building the annex um, that has to be taken into consideration to make any kind of comprehensive uh, judgment on the actual financials that are going to be involved uh, so i will say that this is this is my proposal for, for goals of the committee. Um, I, I'll speak a little bit in terms of how I think we can get there. Uh, but first, I would just like to, to open it up for discussion on this to see if anybody has any objections or any, uh, any additional items uh, to any of these goals. Chris, you touched so, upon it and you said that, you know, prior this committee and prior committees, or, you know, prior groups of the same committee have you know, all proposed different you know, proposals for the for, for the school, which is the big one on the list, I imagine. But, and again, when it comes down to the money, uh, that's when it kind of, you know everything kind of stops. So I mean, how how is how is it any different now? How, how do you see it different moving forward? So I, I guess this gets into kind of my idea as to how we get here to to actually accomplish this kind of recommendation. Um, I think that, well, let me just give you a little story here. I am quite a few hours deep uh, in the past couple of weeks on working on, you know, what, what has kind of turned into a magnum opus that I originally wanted to present to the committee uh, this week and, and realized with the, the amount of moving parts that this has, um, this is, it, it's more than any one person or indeed a, a volunteer committee can, can handle. Uh, because you, you have so many different uh, things to consider. I also believe that there is a, uh, th there, there is, well, not, not believe, there, there are funds allocated to this committee for the purposes of uh, what, what the, you know, the, the precise language being a study, but what I, uh, what I have, have kind of, uh, Kind of coalesced around is the idea that this uh, it's a, there's there's excuse me there's funds for a project manager right, but what we really need is not just is, is a project manager more of on the facilitating side of it. And I spoke with with, with, with John uh, about this as well. Um, it's uh, you know it, it's he and I it, on the conversation when when he mentioned this. Um, it, it was it was it kind of aligned where I was thinking this needed to go. So what I'm what I'm going to be proposing is that the committee work on a an RFP, a request for proposals to uh, solicit someone who can act as a facilitating project manager as opposed to a you know a construction project manager to try and get on paper all of the options that need to be evaluated before because what we're running into whether it's the code questions or whether it's you know the funding questions we still haven't really asked we, we not only do have we not asked all the questions that we need to ask we I, I think there's a lot that we almost don't know we don't know does that make sense so the goal here is to try and bring into bring in a professional that can uh, at least lay all this out for the committee and then for the town uh, so that then some some cost estimates can be put together so that something comprehensive can be presented to the town. So, okay. I hope that I know it was a rambling answer, but I hope it answered the question here. So, um. I have one question. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you mentioned that the Ralph. I can have him? Yeah. It's 6 30. Um, Ten minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> the um, 
Well, there's a lot in this goals here. Um, and it's now going on to October. So we're talking three, four, five, maybe months. That's really ambitious. Um, maybe it can be done. I don't know. But the one piece that I talked about and we talked about one of the times is, and I see the superintendent here, it seems to me the thing that's got to be addressed before anything is, are we going to need that school for schools? And really, before we go anywhere, don't we have to answer that question? And even though there's a bunch of other issues with this building and other buildings, uh, it seems to me that that trumps everything until we say yes or no. I mean, you can ask a certain time. Two questions I would have. What kind of needs do you see coming down for different grades for the next five or ten years? Secondly, is that the place we ought to be doing it in that building? There are clearly two different questions. Um, and it seems to me until those get answered, um, you really can't talk about realistically other uses for that building. No. So, the group do it. We'll have him here. Yep. Let's see what his, his idea is. I, I would add yeah. one thing to that, if I may, mm -hmm. to the chair, um, that if there was some partial need for school use for that building, in addition to administrative costs, what, what kind of issues would the school department have having the public access there when you have children present? given all of the security issues that I know that you uh, <coughs> mandate for any employees that go to the school, if you're mixing a public school with a public municipal building. So to keep that in mind, if, if you just had a partial use for that. So I, I, I guess in your answer to, you, to the question from Mr. Gifford, I, I'd be curious to include that as well. So if, if I may, uh, I, I concur that that's kind of the first option that needs to be evaluated and need, we need to know, uh, you know, what kind of projections uh, are coming from the school department. Um, what I envisioned when uh, doing such a comprehensive review here would be to include the possibility of needing uh, the building for school facilities. Um, and I think that um, I would like to hear from the superintendent if he is if he is willing here. Uh, but uh, I, I uh, and if not, no worries. I, <laughs> but I, I I think that it's important that that be discussed. But as as John did mention, it is already October. This is if the, you know the next next thing up is the timeline. It's it is an ambitious timeline. Um, I would like to get input from all town departments uh, first on that list would be the school department uh, in order to add to uh, what add to the, the task list if you will as to what needs to be evaluated um, but I, I do think that it's it's necessary to go ahead and press on with uh, at least beginning an evaluation if even if the school department does not have a comprehensive count or, or projection at this time uh, that being said, if the, if with the committee's indulgence, I would love to hear from uh, from the superintendent if if he, he's willing at this time. If there's any any new enrollment projections or anything like that. Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, uh, just a couple of things, and I'm I'm not trying to obviously. Um, if if the MSBA can't get uh, projections right in. Um, they clearly didn't. I'm always a little cautious about what I said. I can tell you what we've seen over the past couple of years. Um, we have had uh, two years of uh, uh, enrollment increase. In, in the past two years, it's been over 70 students. Um, we're going to be a little careful until October 1st to announce what the enrollment increase is going to be because that's when the state says this is the official number. Uh, I can tell you, though, that I, I think I can say conservatively we're going to be looking at over 50 uh, additional students this year. Um, probably going to be more, but I'm just going to say 50 to be conservative. Uh, additionally, um, uh, 
believe it or not, in the new school, um, we're, we're coming close to capacity at this point. Um, we're, I believe the capacity is somewhere around 875, um, you know, and uh, we're, we're very close to that right now. Additionally, as most people know, we use the fields for our uh, sports. Um, unfortunately, when the new school was built, uh, it wasn't built, and again, this is not a criticism of anybody, just a statement of fact that um, it's, um, we, we definitely could have used a few more fields um, and, and they don't currently exist. So um, I anticipate additionally that we're looking very hard at trying to provide for the community uh, adult education and um, an early child uh, care center uh, because there is a tremendous need for that. If you take a look at our out-of-school time program, uh, there's a pretty considerable waiting list and we really do wish we could accommodate everybody, but right now we can't, not believe it or not, not because of space as much as uh, personnel finding people to do that, but um, there are going to be a number of uh, uh, things that are going on where um, whether it's this building or some other building, we're probably going to have to look um, at additional space, um, especially in light of the neo-technical program that we've uh, initiated uh, starting in this school year for grades 5 through 12 in an effort to expand our kids' ability to uh, get access to technical education. So um, we've got a number of things going on, but if you look at the just basic numbers right now, we're looking at a bare minimum of, of over 50 additional students, and we're getting extremely tight at the uh, new school at this point. As a matter of fact, we've, we've had some discussions about the possibility of things to keep going the way they are, or, you know, reconfiguring the schools again because it's just space is going to be an issue. And it's not an exercise of fun. Uh, it, it's, it's really problematic, but we've got to look at everything moving forward. I don't know if that answered your question. It, it, it certainly uh, is on the way to. I, I think um, no matter what, it's an option that has to be considered that the need to use the school as a school again could uh, could come uh, perhaps sooner rather than later, but in any case, I, I think it's um, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Mr. Superintendent, but this is it's it's a question that still is you know could it possibly yes, uh, but it's not a question that you're going to be able to answer in the next month or two. Is that is that a fair statement? You'd say, well, or? Like I said, October first, we'll have our numbers and we'll have a breakdown for the committee at our next committee meeting about where, where those numbers are sitting. Um, you know, for example, last year we had a pretty large 5th and 6th grade uh, group that now become 6th you know, and 7th grade. So we're, we're looking at those trends. Um, you know, and again, interestingly enough, is there's more options for parents out there. It's uh, really a, a credit to uh, everybody who has contributed um, to, to the success of our district that we continue to draw more and more students. And uh, I think it's a credit to uh, Everybody, including you know, members of the finance committee, uh, obviously the school committee, select board, and, and the town committee. I have a question to, to the superintendent. Do you think, and I'm just asking an opinion, I don't, I'm not sure if you know the answer, so I'm going to ask, but is it a what, uh, dis distributed across all grades? Is it a certain segment of grades? And is it, uh, I guess, New residents, or do you think it's just a influx of people, like for instance, Conley closing, and, uh, or a combination of all of the above? Well, it is. Uh, we we didn't see a big influx of school choice. I believe the number that we had for school choice was somewhere around seven, if my math serves me correctly. So that wasn't the big mover. The big mover this year was the retention of eighth graders going into ninth grade and the uh, introduction of our elite program, which allows uh, seventh graders going into eighth grade who have strong academic skills and are recommended by the administration, they can move directly from eighth grade into ninth grade and start earning credits uh, for their high school career. So if I could follow up on my original point, can you foresee a problem? I, I, I can't see that you would need 155,000 square feet of the whole school back. You know, to retain. I'm the, oh, I know that you are. <laughs> given the option, I'm sure that you would jump at it. But um, if you could not say that you could commit to that whole school, which I'm sure that you could, given the reasons why it was vacated, that it wasn't suitable for educational purposes at the time, if there were a blend, if there was a portion of the building that was still 
set up for educational purposes, but in addition to that, Council on Aging, municipal offices, if there were some outside element, do you foresee a problem having educational students in a public building? I don't in the sense that we have a, a very strong relationship between the uh, safety people and, and, and you know, Mr. Souza as well, and uh, we would work to sort of cordon off what needed to be okay. cordoned off. We're doing that currently with our, our out-of-school time program. Okay. Uh, we, we cordon off a, a portion of that so the kids don't have access to the full building. Okay. All right. But it's a good question these days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, I, I would make a comment uh, that maybe some of the other people at the table, when I talk in town about this, everybody says, oh, we don't need any more school space. So you've got a PR program, project, uh, problem. And uh, so I would encourage you and your staff to start getting some articles every week in the paper and on TV and coming to this meeting, sending somebody to this meeting and beating the drum about what you need. Because I can tell you out there, I talk to, every day I talk to people and go, yeah, they don't need anything, they got excess space. And um, so that's something I don't, I bet other people have heard that too. Um, so. Uh, if that's an interrogative, I have an answer for it. <laughs> um, I would suggest just a couple of things. Um, you know, first of all, I, I think, you know, I, I was asked on numerous occasions recently, uh, who our communication person is, uh, that would be me. Uh, <laughs> who's our uh, PR person, uh, that would be me. Um, That's that, being, that being said, um, we have an incredibly strong uh, social media presence and in, in, in actually quite, quite an envy of other districts, mm. especially considering the size of our, of our district. That being said, I think the ones who say they don't need a new school or, uh, you know, I, I, you know, it, it rolls off the, off, the, off the tongue easily, but it really doesn't deal with the reality that we're facing no. on a day-to-day -day basis. My, my concern is at some point this committee is going to come back and say whatever we're going to say. And if you and other people don't jump up and say we need that school, then something else could come along. You know, I don't know. It might, you know. I'd like to just add on that little quick one too. I mean, that was one of the reasons why we, we came forward and saying that we, we know he has a need for it immediately. Right now, he's still using it. So yeah. that's why I was a little concerned when we were trying to get rid of the building. So now we're just trying to look at what kind of options we can use yeah. to blend it. And, and in the last meeting, we brought up some, some things on you know the possibilities in the future and expansion. It probably will be better to build another school and possibly maybe on the, you know, down the future. But we still have a need for the admin now that will blend perfectly. What we have, I think what we have going on that school right now will blend perfectly with all of the municipal offices and we can eliminate some of this other stuff. If, if I could just to touch up on some of these points to just to refresh everyone's memory. So as far as the school size, the, the size of the new school and what it was designed for, uh, it wasn't the town that came up with the, the size, uh, the number of students in the schools. The MSBA did a comprehensive study, that demographic study which they do in every town that they build mm -hmm. schools. And believe it or not, the number they came up with at the time was 830-something. And we said, hey, uh, you know, we're gonna build a new school, we hope to be, you know, retain some more kids, maybe attract some more kids. Can you, can you give us a little bit more space? And they, they bumped it up to 860. Mm -hmm. So that school was designed for 860. I mean, could you put more than 860 in there? Yeah, sure, but it was designed for 860. And, and as far as, uh, John, those, those people in town that say, oh, you don't, you know, again, we, we, we got rid of a middle school, we built another school to replace the middle school and to replace the high school. It's not like the new school was built with like extra space. It just wasn't, that's just not the, it's just not the way that those things are. So it's not like we have more space. And uh, the superintendent mentioned, you know, the numbers going up, which is something we've always wanted. We've always wanted to retain uh, more of our town kids yep. in school. And uh, he mentioned eight to ninth graders is the one year where we tend to lose a lot of students, kids that go off to Diamond, some parochial schools, some other local schools, now charter schools, school choice. And on a typical year, it was around 50 kids a year we'd lose. Well, because of great things that are going on in the school right now, more of those kids have decided to stay. So if we see that trend continue, I mean, it would only take a few years for, for us to end up with a couple of extra hundred kids 
in the high school, which is really where we, we, we need them or where we, we'd like to see the high school grow. Middle school is already big, the middle, elementary school is big, the, you know, uh, programs at the Macomber School. We've actually cut back on some programs that the parents need and want for their kids because of staffing or space issues. So, but as far as the new school being, you know, we don't need any more space now. I'm, I, like Tom said, I'm sure he could find yeah. a lot of things to do with the, with the school. Just to uh, just to kind of bring this back around, um, I, I think ultimately it is it, it does have to be the first option that is considered in any kind of uh, any kind of rec or, uh, any kind of evaluation of what to do with the old high school. But but again, this kind of gets back to where it's. You know, it, that building does not exist in a vacuum. It's a question of all of the municipal buildings, including all the school facilities and everything. So I uh, just, just to kind of bring it back to, to the action item here, this because of this question that's out there, um, and again because of where we are on the timeline, uh, what, you know, it being already October, um, this is exact. It's really exactly why I, I thought it would be good to. Uh, just kind of forge ahead with, with a goal of, of getting a comprehensive report to make a comprehensive recommendation. Um, so I, I want to make it clear that in doing so, including and including uh, evaluations of the use of the old high school, it, it, it is not that it's not going to, it might not be a school. That guy, I, I would not discount that option as well, and that would be part of, part of the evaluation. So just, just to make that clear. It sounds to me like the immediate need is already being taken care of, and that's the playing field situation. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's a, a must, it sounds like to me. There's no choice there. Okay, so there's no choice there. And I'm going to ask a question to Tony. Uh, we want, okay, so we're, we're bringing more kids into the high school. But do you ever see, foresee, can I don't foresee this, but ever see the point where, because a lot of the programs we can't offer, don't we have to pay for to allow kids to take somewhere else in what sense what do you mean like, like if we can't offer something and they need to take uh, a, a certain program or anything wherever it be don't we have to well if it's sped if it's special education stuff uh, those type of things that but yeah that goes on and it, that will continue to go on if we can't service a, a specific need of a child in the district but doesn't it cost us a lot of money oh, to send a ton it? of money oh absolutely well, this is where I'm getting to uh, would we get to the point where we wouldn't have to do that is that what we're shooting for here? Or? So, so yeah, and, 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 and we've been doing those things. So our, our, our SPED directors, uh, you know, any chance we have, uh, you know, over the years, uh, hey, why did you guys hire this person? Well, we, you know, we spent you know, $80,000 to hire this professional, but that professional is saving us $200,000 right. because now they can service these two or three kids that we would normally be shipping off to Providence or wherever, you know. So, yeah, we, we do a lot of that as, as much as we can, but... There's a lot of it we can't do strictly because of the fund, the funding issue. Is it the funding or the size or the number? Like, is it a function of the number of kids that are in the programs or a yeah, function let's of not, the Yeah, Tom can uh, Yeah, what, what Mr. Um, Perez is speaking about is, is you know, for example, um, we have students who have behaviors who, quite frankly, the, the school doesn't have the you know, capability, so they end up at an alternative placement. We actually, a couple of years ago, looked into trying to start our own program to keep these students in, in district and it was just a money uh, issue and a space issue. Those are the two uh, issues that we faced at that time. Otherwise we would try and keep as many of them in district as possible. So just to follow up on that, I know that there are certain certain nonprofit outfits that, um, that, that specialize in special ed. It, one of the options that I was thinking might be worth evaluating is if there could be uh, a, a entity that would come in and perhaps rent the old high school to uh, to cater just to, to uh, special education needs. Um, I know that there are other districts that have done a similar arrangement uh, on the side of the the state. So I'm just cu curious. Do you think that that could be an option? Uh, what part of the that co What do you call it? The, the, we uh, uh, we partner with the South Coast Education Collaborative. Collaborative. I think it's us in uh, like about 16 other schools that uh, you know, utilize that service with a fee, of course. But um, it, it is 
much more cost effective. If we're talking about bringing a, a third party into it to run, my only concern is that I've seen in many cases they're more concerned about their own existence than they are about what's best for the community. So, understood. But, I understand. If, but if we had the funding to hire two, three, four specialists that could serve a certain, uh, you know, a certain uh, population of that that spit, those spit community, yeah, we could we could have our own program here, mm -hmm. and other districts could then pay us to service their kids, just like we yeah. pay other schools to send our kids to. Could uh, we do that? Yes, but it all needs to be But yes. it's not just that, it's other programs, you know, it's outside the SPED programs. It, I'm talking about just simple little things like, okay, I have a very talented eighth grader who wants to play ice hockey, and he can't. No, we just co op no, so, so, so sports, things like that. So, we don't have a nice hockey team, obviously. Right, right. So, the kids go co op with uh, Atlantis, I believe. No, or actually, Diamond. for hockey, uh, it's, it's Derfie. Diamond and Durfee in Westport. That's for the uh, hockey. And for football, it's. Yeah, that, that's more of a. Uh, Do we have to pay for that? No, it, no, there's no cost okay. to, to the district for okay. that. The kids okay. have to, there's co op programs. The kids because actually have to transport themselves. Because that's some of the parents that I know who have kids that are talented in whatever area it is. You know, well, I mean, it's, 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 it's a matter of numbers. numbers. If we had enough, kid, right. of, enough kids to, to start a football team next year, of course we'd have one. Right. You know, last year we started lacrosse. It was a huge success, huge success. We were co op in McConley for that. But if you guys you remember, uh, four or five years ago, we used to co op girls' soccer with Conley. And one day we said, no, we got enough girls to have our own team. That was the best thing we had. What I'm getting at, okay, we start offering these things, and now exponentially more kids are staying in Westport. Mm -hmm. So the population or the growth or however you want to put it, whatever grade it is, you know, exponentially starts the same thing. Will we have, do we have an ability to absorb that impact? Well, I mean, if, uh, again, so say in two, yeah, say in two three story. years we have, we have a bunch of kids that say, uh, Mr. Auburn, we want our own football team. Well, we, I mean, we'd figure a way. We'd, Say okay, can we do this? Can we have our own football team? We have enough kids to try out. We'd, we'd make it happen. I mean, My concern is the use of this. Getting back to the use of the school is, you know, where everything I hear and everything I've seen and every proposal I've seen has, has been a multi-use for the high school. Mm -hmm. Not knock down multi-use, and we get to a multi-use where we're sticking the town hall, let's say, in there and the annex and everything, and we have whatever grades, whatever or whatever programs in there. And then we get to a point like, okay, we've got to boot the town hall back to the town hall because we don't have enough room because of the growth in here. And, and so you know. just to interject, this, this is exactly, this is exactly the point. These, what the conversations we're having here are very important to the town and very important to the various town departments, especially to schools and, and, and to the community. But it's very easy for us to get lost in the weeds um, because, you know, if this was a finance committee meeting and our, our joint meeting coming up, I've got much more I'd like to say on, on a few of, and, and, and questions I'd like to ask on a few fronts with that. Well, as far as like spending, two, this, all these things are two, two prong, three prong, yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, and the and building and exactly. the facility. And that's that's why I think the key thing that this committee can do to to, to not only fulfill the the actual purpose of the committee, but to best benefit the town, is to have okay this is the goal we we need some professional help to get everything on paper so that we even know what if it what options we're actually evaluating because right now in an we objective can have, person as well exactly. I mean, you've got a professional objective party right. to assess what these needs are and what the assets that we have and how to match those up exactly. i mean we can talk all we could spend hours talking about right the, the possibilities and we have <laughs> right and we have over the years I mean, and we have and, and so we need someone to hone that down so yeah. we need somebody to put a dollar number on exactly yes exactly. until we get a dollar exactly. number everything is just just, just ideas right yes um, and a lot of good ideas but the question is how do you evaluate them without that dollar number a we slightly can't, different so. version of it which i talked to chris about and still uh, I've worked on projects where there was what they call a facilitator who isn't an expert. They come in, they don't know anything about it, to do it. But what their expertise is taking a group like this and helping us to define what we want to do, how we want to do it, and sort of, they're not leaders, they're off on the side as coaches, people who've done this before. 
Uh, my gut is that's what we need. Uh, my guess is in here in this room and in this town, we have the answers. It's the, how the hell do we get them? And how do we put them in a form that we can understand and then get to the town? It, uh, it's about the money. It's all about a cost to do every little step along the way. Mm -hmm. That's to me. That's you. You know, you're not going to get an override. You're not going. People are not going to keep sinking money as maintenance to school unless they know when something's going to happen. And until they know what it's going to cost to do whatever we're going to do there, or whatever can be done there, well, we yeah. can't move forward. And and again, to get there, we've got to know what options need to be. We need to know every option that that needs to be evaluated, and that's. That's where I think we I have options. Where we're at right we just now. we just need to know what is the I mean it's the cheapest option. It's gonna be the one that gets the least <laughs> most efficient at home. Well, well, one of the options we have is if we sold it, we'd have to find some place for the administration for the schools immediately. Yeah, there's so many so that's that's kind of an option that in the I, fields, right. I, I think fields. we're coming to the point that that we need to keep it and now we're just gonna decide which how to direction we're gonna go and how much money it's gonna be, but we're keeping it because the cost to get rid of it is going to be too enormous. Well, yeah. the cost to keep it could be more enormous than the cost to build a whole new building, too. Because you're looking at, it depends what the you're you're looking at you know, future maintenance, you know, new roof, new windows, new whatever, you know, it should just be exponential costs added on to the 200000 just to keep the lights on. You know, I mean, at some point, there's, you a, there's a cost now, right? We're yeah. spending two to $300,000 a year now for the admin offices. So it's... It's not free, it was maybe, not, maybe inexpensive compared to other places, but there is a cost. Right. And whatever we do, we, do, we just need to know what the costs are. If it's a cheap option, we need to know what the cheap cost is. If it's a, an all-in option, we need to know what the all-in option is. Is there a better option? We, we need to know that. Um, well, we, we, de we determined when we built a new school that that was the best option to build a new school because that's the way we could get the extra funding. Well, so it's going to be the same thing. Looking it, the, the extra funding is not always the best option. Right. Though. Well, I mean, I guess, again, until we get to the point where we have something in front of us, in front of the committee, with at least, you know, even if it's, you know, barely ballpark estimates, still some sort of dollar estimates to be able to evaluate the decisions. So how do we get that so person to do that? That's that's where, can I that's where I'm hoping piece here we can start. Can I a puzzle? And it is a puzzle. Can the school department put something forward to us that says, look, this is our worst guess, our best guess for five years, for 10 years, for a different, so that we have some numbers for class size to plug into the existing building to see it. Are we talking about five classrooms or 15 classrooms over there? Because, as you can see from this table, we've got a lot of opinions, but we're gonna need hard numbers because um, that, can be translated into dollars for renovation and whatever else we use it for. Can we fit the other parts of this building in what we got left over there? Uh, there's a bunch of issues, but I think the school department in many ways triggers what the rest of this committee is going to be able to do. Maybe that nice. Torn up just for clarifying our numbers. Right now we're at 374 at the high school, we're at 507 at the middle school. Now again, until October 1st, this is unofficial, so. What's, what's your guess we're, we're, two years from now? Oh, I think I think with the programming that we're offering, I think it's gonna be really attractive, especially the neo-technical program, which is a different way of presenting vocational education to students that I think will give them more options than pigeonholing into a specific program. How, yeah, we, I'm gonna yeah. ask one question. Yeah. Jump in, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm older than Can, how, how big can you get before you can't take any more kids? So this is where it gets a little tricky. So we're at 881 right now, which is probably as close as we want to get. The problem is, is that um, it's not equally distributed. They did it's almost like a, a carbon copy on each side for the middle and the high school. The, the middle school right now is at 507. The, uh, the high school is at 374. I would like to point out that the high school last year was somewhere around 312. So you're looking at significant increase. When you say real attractive, are you saying real attractive to keeping resident kids Indeed. in school or attractive to everywhere else? And there and hopefully with our adult program because we have adults right now who desperately need some additional training with uh, the market and we're able to provide that 
if we can get the infrastructure going. And we are, in fact, trying to work with a, a non-government agency to help get this uh, uh, adult uh, education program going. And, and Tom, if you could uh, maybe help me with these numbers. Before COVID, on average, we had eight to 12 kids being homeschooled in town, and now that's like at 30. Right, so yeah, we're, we're, I, I guess we're over 40, actually, yeah. So as these kids, we, we, we imagine and assume that some of these kids will uh, tend to graduate, you know, come back to the school. So, I mean, that's just kids that were in the, in the system, were in the schools, and then because of COVID, they went homeschool, and, and some of them decided to continue on that route. So, so we also have to keep in mind, too, that even if we use the school for educational purposes, we can move sounds like building code lines we can move kids over there now but when we looked at building a new school they looked at that school and said this is not conducive to modern educational use so i think if it was done on a temporary basis maybe we could get away but if you're looking at a long-term plan to educate the students here in westport you don't want to put them in an outdated facility you want to update that facility to provide them with the best education that they can get so right you know everything's going to have a cost no matter what we do we just really need to i look at going back to the studies of the demographic of the town. The largest growing segment of populations and everything, and it was above 50. Yeah, fast. Which is not the childbearing years yeah. of most people. Right. Now, so that's what the MSBA was. How many kids were in your class? My, my, senior, class, my senior class, I graduated in 1975. The senior class was 94. Okay, so I graduated in 78, and it was 105. We're not even well, close to that now. Yeah, we're not even close to that. Right. Two years ago, we were at, what, 56? So my concern is, are we, you know, is the demographic and what the cost of housing it's in this town is becoming? Right. Uh, what, what's going to happen to that school age children population? Yeah. I, I so, it's, it's tough though, too, right? I had three kids that went to the school who were four years apart from the oldest and the youngest. The senior year, the oldest one was up over 100 something. The senior year, the youngest one, I think, was like 60. Right. It was in, right. in partly because that's when they moved from the middle school and they got squished into the old right. high school. A lot of people left the system. Yeah. Right. Now we got a system now where the kids are in the middle school. They see what the high school looks like. They want to stay. But it looks like to me, over I'd say 50 years, right. the population coming out of Westport High School has been dead flat. Pretty much. It, go, it, it goes up and down. It's very yeah, I mean, uneven. No, not, but not like yeah, uneven, 200 uneven, and then right. 200. It's unevenly no. distributed. So it's... Um, and during... My lifetime, and I have six brothers and sisters who graduated from Westwood High School. Uh, you know, there were a lot bigger families than there are now. Granted, the population has gone up, the population has gotten a lot older. And again, I, and I, I think just retaining more town kids, it's just those kids alone. But I just don't see the, 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 how many town kids are there. That's the number I'm trying to get. Do we need to do this? See, that's where we have to quantify it because to me, if we're going to use it as a school and rehab it as a school and modernize it, whatever you say. Well, think about you it. You need to know that you're going to have to do that, that for a long-term basis. 250, 300 Westport kids that don't attend the schools between Diamond and the other parochial, right? Probably 300 kids. I don't think it's that high, Tony. 200? I, uh, I, I think it's somewhere around there, if I had to guess, because... You well, you're always going to have a diamond component, maybe even a larger diamond component. Yeah, but that's, see, but that's changing. See, yeah, that's the thing that's changing down. now because I think, like Tom mentioned, some of these programs that well, these kids don't really have, need, well, diamonds we can a brand new school. Right. Uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd just like to, to bring it in here because I, yeah. I uh, as I said, these are crucial conversations. But I, I do think if... If this committee is going to be able to accomplish anything, we have to narrow it just a little bit, and and just to put a pin in everything that, that has been discussed as far as uh, as far as the school uh, is concerned, or as far as the the school department is concerned, and the amount of, uh, of students involved. Even if uh, you know if the old high school is going to need to be used again as an educational facility, or if a new educational facility needs to be considered, either way. Um, that you know that's part of the options that, that need to be evaluated but we still I think it would be in, in the best interest of the, t of the town if we as a committee move ahead to evaluating all the options on the table and and also figuring out what every single one of those options are which is why again I'm, I'm going to bring it back to to the, the the motion on the table which is to to approve 
these goals as goals of the committee. And I would like to mention one last thing. Uh, the final goal, uh, long-term building committee shall deliver a comprehensive recommendation to the town of Westport by the end of the first quarter, uh, 2024, complete with detailed estimates of all associated costs. Now, I will say that that recommendation does not necessarily need to be, this is the one thing we're going to do with this building. The key here is to be able to lay everything out and have numbers attached to it as best as we can come up with to make sure that, that the town has the, all the information to evaluate every option that's out there. So that's where that's where we are with this with this goal. Um, you know, looking at the amount of time we've we're, we're, we've been here already, I do want to go ahead and call the question. And I would ask, uh, you know, I, I would ask at this point to uh, if there are no amendments to this, I, I would ask for an up, up and down vote at this point from the committee. And so. Don't we have a motion on the table? Yeah, you yeah, said yeah, yeah. That, was that, was that was a long discussion. Yeah. <laughs> that was okay. a long discussion. And, and, and again, it's important, so I didn't want to okay. cut it off ultimate. But I have a problem with number four because the way it's stated is a comprehensive recommendation by end of 20. I think that has to be clarified. So uh, is this a. Are you moving to amend this by any chance, or? I would think if there's an amendment, it would be appropriate, a, a recommendation. You have to qu qualify what is the recommendation. You want to strike because, the word comprehensive? Yes. Okay. Strike the word comprehensive. Yes. yes. Okay. I'll include that in my motion. I will, I'll consider it a friendly, and we'll, we will say that the, uh, the motion as, uh, as it reads now. So you want a non-comprehensive. Yeah, I, I don't tell you that. Like that's thinking that. about, <laughs> but a rec we should have recommendations but we available. Just drift. <laughs> I just don't know what I'm sorry. I, what do you, I don't know how we come did up I, with Did I hear your motion, or your amendment correct to say deliver uh, recommendations, plural, to the town of Westport? Does yes. that sound good? All right, yes. there we go. All right. Because I could imagine coming back and saying two or three options. Well, that's what I mean, recommendation. Right. That's, we're going to yeah. make it plural. But a comprehensive recommendation would be... Yeah, we'll hire somebody else an hour that down. <laughs> All right, so as it reads now, deliver, two three deliver three recommendations days. to the town of Westport by the end of Q1 2024, complete with detailed that's estimates of all ambitious. associated costs. It is ambitious, but... We can always change it. Yeah. <laughs> with that, we'll I... Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's what we're tasked with, to make this ambitious so we don't second second. keep kicking the can down the road, come up with some kind of plan. Exactly. <laughs> Right. All right. I will. Uh, that is that is the motion on the table, and I will ask all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And that motion passes. And thank you for indulging me. Uh, the next a action item here is approval for a ambitious yet I do think uh, meetable timeline uh, for. Uh, for this committee, um, so I did pass this out to everyone. Did you get? Did you get this one, Jim? Um, I need. I Does Ann have copies of? I did. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else need a copy of the uh, proposed timeline that I put together here? And you'll notice there's a few. Yeah. If you need another, mm. pass another one down there. Here. Um, there's a few things in this timeline that uh, we have kind of discussed uh, before. Want to uh, so just I'll just go through it here. By the next meeting, which I would uh, propose to be October 11th, which is two weeks from today, um, would like to have uh, a draft request for proposals aimed at hiring what I believe should be termed a facilitating project manager. It's three weeks. Uh, it is. Excuse me. It is three weeks. Yes. Uh, by the way, the reasoning for doing it then. On October the 4th, there is a joint meeting of the Finance Committee, the School Committee, the Board of Selectmen, uh, and, and a lot of the conversations that have, we've just had about uh, student enrollment um, are, are no doubt going to be part of that, part of that conversation, uh, or part of that meeting. And I think that uh, it, would, it would be wise to wait until after that meeting uh, to, uh, to meet again with, to, with all, of the, all of the items that would need to be uh, looked at uh, and, and put into an RFP. Uh, I will, I, I know that Jim sent this out to a couple of us. It's a, it's a copy of a, uh, 
uh, an RFP from another town, and it escapes me which town it is, uh, but it's a, uh, speaking of magnum opus, uh, yeah, the town of Lincoln did, a, did an RFP for, for something similar. Um, so I've kind of been using that as at least a, a, uh, a I won't even say a starting point, but, but a kind of a guide as to, you know, some of the things that would need to be included uh, to uh, to make sure that you know everything can be evaluated. Um, I, I would ask Jim since you just got back with this being not necessarily a construction project per se, what is the timeline that bids would need to be accepted legally speaking? Good question. I don't know if it qualifies for professional services. It may. If it does, then we can go pretty quick. If not, okay. It's probably probably looking at minimum four weeks. Okay. Um, so, uh, you said if not, it would if it does not qualify as professional services, it would be right. Okay. Who makes that I determination? Would. Town council. I, I I would check to see what yeah. it's out there. So I would think it would. I would, I would think, think it, it would because we're not we're not talking about an architect or builder here. Just no uh, capital no, no capital costs involved in the. In exactly. This process. Yeah. Um, so, what Our I project managing you do have to go out for. It. So, a facilitated okay. type managing may not. Uh, so, let me ask you this: um, with the what was approved within the funds of the town meeting was for studies or a project man and and or a project manager, depending on the exact wording. Um, would a as we've discussed, a facilitator type would that uh, yeah, I think, fall under? I, th I think it's managing the project, right? It's helping us move the project along, so I think you can justify it. Yes. Okay. So my next question is: What might be? I, they might be cutting the recording off. Cause <laughs> I'm long-winded. Uh, <laughs> it's Valerie's phone. It's Valerie's phone. Oh. Let me see if she's on the line. It is. It's my father. Oh, your phone. It's my father's phone. Oh, the line on it. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> no worries at all. Uh, so the um, okay. So so would so if this is a project manager, you're saying it's gonna be it's gonna be well, a project week. manager. We did with the school. We had to go through the process, but that okay. also brought us through construction. So um, it may be different. I, I, I need to check. Okay, but the, the town council will be able to make that determination yeah, pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, theoretically, anyway, um, this could be a pretty quick turnaround as far as getting a project manager or a facilitator, we'll just, we'll, a facilitating project manager, if you will. Um, a couple other things on this timeline. Oh, go, go right ahead. With that timeline, though, everything takes time, right? We, yes, yes. We get out the bid, we do the proposals, we, we get a contract, we have to have the board of select and sign the contract. Um, everything tends to miss the weeks, you know? Yeah. Comes in on Thursday when the deadline's Wednesday and gets put off two weeks, so you could very easily be looking eight to ten Is there weeks. a dollar amount below which you don't have to go through all of this? The reason I ask is I talked to one of these people because I happen to have a kind, and she said that's going to cost ten, twelve thousand bucks. And I'm looking at this paperwork and I'm going, she's not going to do all this paperwork for ten or twelve thousand dollars. And I'm wondering if for small things like that, yes, there's an accelerated way yes. to do it. Yeah, if it's that much, then we could probably move along. Yeah. What's is there a threshold off the chain? Yeah, depending on the service, there's different okay. thresholds. Could be ten or twenty-five thousand. Could okay. be fifty thousand. So I will say, even with putting some ambitious uh, re turnaround time on on such a uh, uh, report from from an outside consultant or outside uh, facilitator, um, I, I would anticipate not getting anything until January at best. And I think you know that's that's realistic. But I do think there are things that we can do. Uh, as a committee, in the meantime, uh, including, um, I, I would like to put together a, a survey uh, instead of, I've, ha I've had some informal conversations with several town department uh, heads already, but I would like to, to create a, uh, a survey, an actual survey for uh, the town departments to fill out. Uh, I'd like to, and, and I will take, I've been 
working on a draft of that, and I, I would bring that to the next meeting for the committee's approval, and if, if there are any edits, that are, and if anybody has anything that they would uh, specifically look like to see on that kind of survey, please please let me know, um, or I guess let Jim know, and then just to make sure mm -hmm. I don't have any open meeting issues. Um, but the, uh, so again, the, the idea would be to have by, uh, by the next meeting, uh, a draft RFP, uh, a draft uh, survey for the town departments. Um, I'll just go ahead and read this timeline just for, for the meeting's sake. Uh, so uh, the proposed timeline here, by the next meeting, October 11th, approve a draft request for proposals aimed at hiring a facilitating project manager uh, and finalize and approve a draft survey for town departments. Uh, November 2023, second week of uh, November, tentatively uh, select a, a facilitating project manager based on the RFP responses, although if that need, timeline needs to change because of legal requirements, so be it. Um, I, I had on here allocate uh, the, the, the appropriate funds here. I'm not sure if that needs to come, if we need to make a formal request from the committee to the selectmen to when it actually comes down to hiring here, or if that goes directly through this board of selectmen. Selectmen will sign the agreement in the contracts and they'll approve it. Easy enough, okay, good deal. Um, and then, uh, so hopefully, hopefully uh, in November here, uh, get the, the town uh, department surveys. The other thing is I would like to uh, distribute a, uh, or at least have available online, a, a town uh, community, a community survey. I know this has been done before that there has been input solicit from from uh, from the community and I think it'd be uh, it, it would be important to allow that opportunity uh, to see to see what comes in um, and uh, the ideally that would be distributed at the end of November uh, during December uh, would like to uh, hopefully have some sort some draft reports or, or some interaction with the facilitating project manager here to uh, uh, I imagine there, there will be lots of questions uh, for for the committee from the manager uh, or from the facilitator here, uh, and uh, also uh, in December we could evaluate data collected from from the community surveys as well as the uh, the town department surveys. Um, again, it would be great if in December the aim is to receive a comprehensive report from the facilitating project manager. Realizing that that may well be into January, uh, January, January, and February would be uh, beginning to uh, try and solicit some some estimates uh, for for the projects uh, and to work on the finance uh, aspect of, of what these are will cost. Again, even if they're ballpark figures, it's better it's better than what we're working with now, which is just. Uh, a lot of ideas. Uh, and the ultimate goal is finalize recommendations based on evaluation surveys and financial estimates and to aim to present these to the town of Westport by the end of the first quarter of 2024. Um, this is, I think, uh, I guess we, if we don't need to, um, I, I, so I didn't actually move this yet and I think uh, maybe this is just something we can, um, I don't know if it's if it's the committee's thought that we should go ahead and approve this and say this is the timeline we're sticking to, or if we should just call it, uh, if, if we should work off of it but not have it, you know, officially codified. Use it as a will. road roadmap. Exactly. Use it as a roadmap as opposed to a, uh, you know, a mandate. Sort of. It's <laughs> over our heads anyway. But um, but if anybody has any other well, discussion on this right now. Jim, do we have a mandate of a date that we have to turn around and get something to? I don't think there is a specific mandate, no. But if you're not ready by the end of quarter one, then we won't be able to go to town meeting to ask for money either. Okay. Then we that, do, really. Kind yeah. Of. Not to mention, I think there could be, you know, if we start again, turnover in the committee, you know, if it goes down to, goes beyond town meeting and gets into June or July or something, you know. I, uh, again, I, I, appreciate this is that this is a, an ambitious timeline but i think that um because this has been discussed for so long and as jim mentioned it does cost the town money uh to do nothing and i think it's you know um this is i think this is what we're as a committee tasked with doing so that's that's this is my uh 
you know, my, my idea as far as uh, what we can do with the time allotted. So. Chris, may I ask a question? Uh, Absolutely. You mentioned a couple of surveys, one for town departments and one for community. Mm -hmm. I believe we've done the community surveys. Uh, I think more general, you know, should we keep the school high or, or get rid of the form, school? I don't think we've done a form that survey. And I think, you know, I think for the most part, people say, oh, why do you want to get rid of it? Right. But as far as the department surveys, what, what's your thinking with the department surveys? So what, what are we asking them? What I would like to, and again, I, I, you know, this is something I would bring to the committee before anything goes out and of course get, get input. But my, my general idea is I think every single town department would say, yes, we'd love, you know, all the space in the world and, and, and uh, you know, window offices for everybody. But I, uh, what I'd like to ask is, okay, kind of an evaluation of what space is being, what your space is being used right now. I think there are certain town departments that'll be able to provide um, even like square footage estimates as far as okay, where they're at right now. That's what you think of. But also just a, okay, here's where you are right now. Here is your absolute best best case scenario uh, in your, your palatial uh, digs and then here is you know something in the middle because I, I think what we find so, sometimes is that people don't want change believe it or not so which, some people are perfectly happy you know in this building yeah. in a particular office and they don't want to move go maybe they're afraid of consolidation and this that and the other so. I, I think it is very important that this be uh, an inclusive process for not just uh, for, not just for members of the community, but also for those. But I mean, I, I, so I think that is good as far as asking, like, you know, what are your use, you know, what are your needs now? What do you, what, what do you see your needs in the future? What, what do you have for square footage? How many actual offices do you actually have within your office? So that information is good, but when you start asking people, like, do you like your office now? Do you want to move? That that information, I mean, that's that's why we're here. That's why this committee's here to make those. That's how you ask you, you can't make you can't make those decisions with a hundred people. It just you know, that's the problem. I, I think it, it it is important to have very um, quantitative based questions. You know, X and Y, and also a couple of open ended to you know, to get to get uh, to at least to get the buy in to get the buy in and to get you know I I do think that everyone involved in any, any kind of uh, whether it's you know refurbishing whether it's moving. I think it's important everybody at least have the opportunity to say something. Okay. So I mean, we had many, many teachers who didn't want to see the middle school go. Believe it or not, they were just last well, yeah, thing they wanted us to do was to lock it down. They loved it. Yeah. I mean, even in you know, like even in the conversations that I've had, I've I've gotten no, don't touch anything. I like being cramped to <laughs> give me a warehouse so that I can <laughs> have yeah. you know all, all the storage. So it's I, I I and I I would anticipate survey responses would be a bit all over the place, but again, I think it's important to have that. Can I ask a question that yes, sort of absolutely. pertains to this? When we did the tour through the building, I was surprised, and I think a couple other people were surprised, to walk down the end of the hall and all these little kids running around down there. And so I'm curious what that program is. And that's that, the uh, that, school that's town. yours? That's the school Do town. you still own the school, or does the town own it? The town owns the school. So. Are you paying rent to this town? We're uh, we're licensed, yes. But that's a very successful program that's been going on for years and years. It's not rent per se; they're yeah, paying for utilities. It's, 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 yeah. So that right. well, selectmen so have an agreement with the school committee that they could use the building, and if they lease it out, so they, any uses would go to. Let me just follow this up because it pertains. Is that something that? You want to keep there, and we have to keep there, or should keep there. And how many kids are we talking about? I believe we're somewhere around 80 kids right now, and again, there is a waiting list uh, in the community. Um, look, if uh, if I had my druthers, we'd have a a, a, a district office with a uh, childcare center uh, off of the Mac Cumber. Um, if if I had my druthers, because you know there's a lot of support. Uh, for the west and the uh, middle high because they're so close in terms of proximity. Whereas the MAC is sort of out on its own and that's why we were so uh, concerned about making sure that our school resource officer went to both the elementary school and, and the MAC because it is, it's out there, you know. So what we saw there is going to continue. 
Well, <laughs> well we're, yeah, I mean, we're, we're meeting, you know, So again. I guess my question is, in our discussion here, should we crank that into our space allocation? Well, that's what the facilitator would. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to do. preempt the facility because I think we can't get them until January. Uh, <laughs> So and the school would be filling out the survey as well, right? Yes, right. yes, absolutely. And and also, you know, um, I I anticipate more conversations like we've had here uh, with school committee, superintendent, etc. Uh, yeah, you know, John, John, if I, if I may, if we had the resources, we would be offering right now. We would be offering more like preschool, uh, pre-K and K programs. Because believe it or not. We have people that want to get in and we, we just can't do it. As a matter of fact, if I may, Mr. Ghost, there's, there's an early intervention program where we actually have to test kids uh, two years, nine months to find out where they are. And then if we see uh, significant academic um, you know, benchmarks not being hit, then we make recommendations relative to what needs to be done in order uh, for these st students to come in and hopefully remediate them. But the need, the need is great. And when we take a look at the legacy problems, that we're facing. What was that age you said to him? Two, uh, two years, nine months, early intervention. Yeah. So think about that. It's really a budget and trust problem more than anything else. I mean, so that's just their the budget. They could have yeah. lots of programs yeah. and the need is great, but the finances are not there. Yeah. I mean, just after school programs alone, if we had the bodies, you know, you'd see a hundred more little kids running around because the need is there. Parents want. The kids involved, parents, you know, that work late, that this gives the kids things to do with the schools, and we, we turn kids away because we don't have the, the staff. What I'm trying to do is, is think through, I sort of see this building filling up already. Yes, <laughs> yes that's, and, that's, that's, that's the concern. You know, we say, okay, we're moving this, that, and there, yeah, and then all of a sudden, all next concern. year, we have to kick them out. This off. is the building that's 50 years old, that has some code issues, it's got some... Well, I mean, um, other issues. Well, these are all things I think that will be addressed. So I, uh, what I would like to go ahead and, and move on to right quick because I know we're we're already beyond an hour here. Um, so, as far as marching orders for myself over the next uh, three weeks here, um, I will finish up with the uh, the town survey, the, the town department survey to, to present to the committee. And Jim, I, I'd like to work with you as far as uh, uh, RFP. I've been working on it okay. a little bit already, uh, or a lot already actually, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll kind of interface with you on that. And hopefully uh, won't add too much to your plate <laughs> on that front. Um, and I am curious if you could let us know yeah, how long we'll 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 you got the clerk, but we nominated him. You weren't here. I wanted to let him do that. <laughs> All right, so uh, just moving on right quick to a couple other items on the agenda. Um, so we kind of did a little bit of a recap with the walkthrough, so I'll just go ahead and strike that uh, for now. Um, the one thing I did want to mention, we don't have to get, I, I think it'd be wise not to get into it too much, but I did want to acknowledge the uh, the proposal that was sent from uh, for a South Coast Arts Center uh, from uh, resident Mary Sear Sear uh, Sire or Sir Sear Sear okay thank you thank you don't wanna butcher the name um, I I appreciated it anyone taking the time to, to put this together I think if anybody has not had a chance to look at it please please look it over um, this goes to what I was saying earlier, I think there are a lot of good ideas out there uh, and and probably a lot of good ideas that we don't, as a committee, know about yet. So that's part of why I was saying I think it's really important to offer uh, offer chances for people to, in the community uh, to give to give feedback, to, to have some input into this process. And also, uh, again, the need for someone to help us uh, lay them out, lay all the options out on the table and start evaluating. So, uh, so again, I just, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge and, and say uh, it was very much appreciated the, uh, the, the input uh, and the, the time that was spent and on there this. There were a lot again. of interesting things in there. One of the things that yeah. got me that, uh, really struck, uh, stuck out was the, the fact that uh, you know, UMass Dominance out there renting you know, retail, yes. yeah. empty retail oh, stores. Totally, yeah. 
Well, that, that oh, whole thing with the bed. Which I thought was, wow. Yeah. Like, don't what think I thought, was school. <laughs> what I thought was interesting about that, though, is that, you know, when they had the, the program at the Star Store in New Bedford, students that live at UMass Dartmouth at the campus, they had a shuttle bus that went from there downtown New Bedford. So the students, I imagine they get the same type of transportation going over to where, because they're at the old Circuit City, right? right. Yeah. yeah, that plaza. Yeah. That plaza, right? And, and I think the bus goes through there. I'm sure, yeah. Having to move the program here is really not that convenient for the students because there is no public transportation that would give them that same access. Well, the school would shuttle. The school has their own yeah. buses. Because I got shuttled to UMass in my senior year to the yeah. calculus. Okay. All right. So if they think yeah, it's not that far, it's just down Old County. Right. Right. I just miles. thought that was an interesting yeah, option because it, they they would have lost. But if they were to, if they were to provide transportation, that would be. I think it's normal. I mean, I yeah. Think it's yeah. So I, I think that's that's another thing worth worth evaluating for yeah. sure. Um, especially, yeah, it was very interesting the way that whole thing worked out at the very last minute. Last they were minute, expecting yeah. it in the in the state budget that didn't come through, and it had to be a certain year mark or a specific year mark for that anyway. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's I, been I a mentioned it many times. I, I think one of the best things the town could do is just put a big old sign in front of that building for lease. For lease. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or you know, right. build to suit or something, and just see where that gets us. You'd be surprised. You, you, you never know. You never know. I think that's worth that's worth evaluating as well. So, uh, okay. So with that, um, any other topics not reasonably anticipated? Uh, did we ever yeah. do that in RFP just for out there with people proposals on? Last year, anything? the year before, we sent a request for like a request for interest in the project. Yeah, nothing. Um, we got affordable housing trust uh, some the proposal. Um, we had some letters from the recreation department. Um, I think the soup kitchen. Uh, I'm not the soup kitchen. I'm saying the food bank. Food bank. Yeah. Um, had some interest, but um, beyond that, we can, we can get them. It's difficult, right? Because people don't want to put the effort into a proposal unless they know they have a chance of getting it. And yeah. just the request. Yeah. You know, well, I hope that woman put some time and effort into that. Indeed. I, I oh, think yeah. this is why that, that so so two things. First of all, I did want to mention those that even though they were a few years old or a couple years old now, I think still need to be included in anything that gets evaluated. Um, but I also think that by offering a slightly more condensed survey uh, for responses, um, you know, I, I Again, I think it's important that the committee be as inclusive as possible to, to uh, see what other ideas out there, maybe even from people that don't have uh, you know, the time to put together such a comprehensive proposal. So well, I, I would include that in the, in the role of the facilitator to seek out uh, yeah. oh, other, other alternatives or, or possible interested candidates. I mean, yeah. we've heard about you know, the training right, academies right. Yeah. for, you know, uh, Law enforcement training academies were looking for some space. Even you know, UMass may be looking for some evening education space. Good Northeastern always branches out uh, to many locations to uh, offer evening programs for adult education. Um, uh, so, I mean, I think that there are other possibilities of, that they should seek out. It's a different request now, too. What we did before was looking more for take the whole building, do what you want with it. Well, yeah. not do what you want with it, but it was more of a take the whole building. And now we're looking at please. more kind of meshing a whole bunch of different things together, which yeah. people would be more apt to come forward, I would think, like, like them, where they only want three or four pieces of the building, not the whole kit group. So what's... He's going to need the whole building. As I said, option number one that's, that's, <laughs> to mention to mention in the value. It wasn't suitable. It wasn't suitable for education. Right. I, yeah. I think that's yeah. 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 Yeah.
I would say we are adjourned.